What's up today? We've got the top 5 best opening traps for black in the Queen's Gambit. So after white opens up with the Queen's Pawn move, Pawn D4, and you're responding with Pawn D5, here we've got the Queen's Gambit, and we're gonna see different opening traps today for black, because you guys are shaming me for putting too many opening traps for white, and yeah, you're right, we gotta compensate that and put some content with the opening traps for black. So let's do this today. So first of all, the first trap starts off after the move pawn c4, you've got this Baltic defense, bishop to f5. And here after knight goes to c3 and pawn e6, there is a very interesting trap. If white just plays you know, normal moves, then you're gonna develop as well, play knight f6, play standard moves, bring your pieces, pieces out and you're fine. But here's the thing, at this point white may decide to take advantage of your slightly unusual move bishop to f5 and they can do this by trying to trade in the center and then following up with queen to b3 which double attacks black's pawns here on d5 and b7 and it looks like black is in trouble because you're gonna lose one of your pawns. But here's what you're gonna do, you respond knight c6 which is a counter blow, you're attacking this pawn on d4 and white will probably need to take one of your pawns because if they just defend passively playing something like pawn e3 there is another problem for white, your knight not only attacks this pawn but it also is ready to be brought out there to b4 aiming to deliver this nasty check from c2 with a double attack of the white's king and rook and therefore that doesn't quite solve the white's problem. So let's take a move back here Therefore, white can't really defend this pawn that comfortably and they're gonna go ahead and take this pawn on b7 because that looks really advantageous for white, right? It attacks your knight, grabs the pawn and overall this queen looks very active. But the problem is after knight takes d4, not only you're getting a pawn back, but you're still threaten, threatening knight to c2, forking the king and the rook. And now white can't stop this anyway, so they may wish to play knight takes d5 symmetrically creating a similar threat of knight takes c7. But the problem is that you've got a winning move rook to b8, which white is very easy to overlook. You're attacking the queen here, the queen can't go away because it also has to defend the knight, your knight is also ready to attack there from c2, so there is just too much for white to handle and basically white can safely resign right now. But they may also try their last chance with this brutal attack knight takes c7 attacking your king but your king can bravely move forward, king to d7, supporting your attack of this knight, and since the queen is also attacked, white well, can't really get anything out of the black's exposed king position, they would have to move their queen somewhere anyway, and now your king even can take here on c7, winning this knight, they have one final check, bishop f4, but your king moves away, and there is nothing white can do against this king, while along the way you won a knight already, and if white tries to avoid the exchange of queens and move their queen somewhere, then you've got knight to c2, which is virtually a checkmate, notice that this line is controlled by the queen, the king is under the check, so white would have to give up their queen here on c2, getting into a completely losing position, so that's the trap number one, quite an unknown trap and really strong. The second trap is one of my most favorite ones, it starts off with a move pawn c5, offering a pawn right away, and the trap is really simple, elegant and natural for white to fall into. It's still a trap for black, if you're curious of what kind of traps you can use as white in the Queen's Gambit, I've got another video about that which you may wish to check out later. Today we're focusing on the traps for black, and if white is seduced to grab this pawn, then you play pawn e6, opening up this bishop and trying to get the pawn back. And now white may think, oh, I can just defend it by playing pawn b4 and yeah, it looks really good for white. But you undermine it by playing pawn a5. And now if white wants to keep this pawn construction, they need to protect their pawn somehow. They can do this by playing pawn a3. That would be one of the ways for white to blunder here. Because now after pawn takes b4, if white tries to recapture, they're actually overlooking that it exposes their rook on a1 and you can just go ahead and win this. So that's not working for white, let's take it back, but cannot defend this pawn on b4 that way. And noticing this, they're gonna defend it by in the other pawn, pawn c3. But now, after this exchange on b4, temporarily looks like white's just dominating, but you've got to move queen f6, and all of a sudden there is no way for white to protect their rook there on a1, and white is lost, as simple as that. The next trap is quite a surprising one. Here after you go knight to f6, after pawn c4, pawn e6, there are two main moves for white, they either develop this knight or this knight. 
And if they go knight f3, this leads into the Queen's India defense after the move pawn b6. The main move for white here is playing g3, trying to put their bishop onto this active diagonal, and then black can respond bishop a6, hitting this pawn on c4. White needs to defend it so they can play pawn b3, and he may play bishop b4. It's still the main line of this opening. And now white can defend this king or cover it by either a bishop or a knight. And if they choose the knight to do the job, then after that, you've got a very sneaky move bishop c3. Using the fact that temporarily this square inside of the white's camp is undefended, and you can land your bishop there and attack the rook. Anyway, it looks like just a one-time attack which doesn't do anything for black. So let's see what's gonna happen next. White needs to move their rook away, and now you play bishop b7, and all of a sudden, the white's position is quite difficult already. What can they do? Well, the normal move such as bishop to g2, let's say, it fails to bishop takes d4. Notice that there is this pin along the long diagonal, and therefore white cannot easily move this knight and take your bishop, or else they will lose their own bishop. And therefore you can basically win this pawn in the center of the board, which is nice. Alright, now let's take a move back and let's see what else can white possibly do here. Another move for white, which is very common, is bishop to b2, trying to trade off this annoying bishop from c3. But instead of trading it, you're gonna put even more pressure onto the white's position by playing knight to e4. And once again, strangely enough, you could use just three minor pieces to put together this quick and devastating attack. It's really not easy for white to defend, and it's probably white is already lost. So what's the point here? First of all, white cannot really take your bishop here, because in this case you recapture with a double attack of the white's heavy pieces, therefore winning one of them, and that's not an option for white. Let's take this move back and see if there's anything else that white can play. If they play virtually any other move, then they fail along this diagonal. For example, if they play bishop g2, another natural looking development move, then you can play knight takes d2, which also attacks this rook on b1, therefore white will need to do something about that, but if they continue trading, then at the end of this line you can win the white's undefended bishop on g2, therefore winning this piece, getting a completely winning position out of nowhere, like you, you really use this sneaky attack and won the game in one of the most solid opening operations for white, that's why it's so cool. The next trap is really nice because statistically white just keeps falling into it and yeah, it works like crazy, the success rate for black is over the board. And before we get into the fourth trap, let me also make a quick announcement that we've just recently analyzed all the feedback that you guys, that our students shared with us and we have made a massive upgrade of our trading portal and now you can easily pick the course that you're most interested in and study it, whether it is on desktop or using your cell phone for your study. So it's now easy and convenient. And because we're launching this new training portal, you can now get any of our courses or packages with a massive 64% discount. I bet you never had a 64% discount in your life because only a chess company could use this chess number. Anyway, it's fun and also beneficial, so if you're interested in improving your chess game, just like thousands of our students who already did so, you can click the link below the video and check this out right now, because the offer is only good for several days. Going back to the trap number 4, you're offering the pawn here right away, pawn e5, pawn takes, and now they play bishop c5, the most played move by white here is bringing their knight out, makes sense, then you play pawn d6, seemingly, you know, just wanting to open up the diagonal for your bishop. And after white takes here, you play the move knight e7, which looks like just a complete blunder. And I really suggest that you play this move as quickly as you can, ideally speaking instantly. Because the point here, your opponent would probably assume that you pre-moved this move knight e7. So your opponent will think that while, let's take a move back, that while he or she was thinking about their move, you pre-move this move 97 and therefore after they played pawn takes d6, the computer automatically moved your knight to e7 without noticing that, you know, the knight can now be captured because the pawn relocated from e5 to d6. So your opponents will be tempted to grab the knight thinking that they're winning, but you're gonna surprise them by bishop takes f2 check. 
forcing the king to move and deflecting the king from the protection of the queen on d1, which is no longer defended, and you're winning the queen and completely destroying the white's position. So, because it's such a tricky trap that, you know, it's so natural for white to fall into, there are thousands and thousands of players who fall into this trap as white. And the following trap arises from the London system, which is so popular nowadays. A lot of players love the London system for its simplicity, while it's putting up the same setup all the time. But here in this point you're playing a surprising move pawn h5. And at first it looks like the move doesn't make any sense, just some random move. And white will very likely to keep putting up their setup, which is pawn e3. But all of a sudden this move is losing. And it's very hard to foresee this if you're unfamiliar with the trap. Because now black all of a sudden can play pawn e5 and this bishop on f4 is going to be trapped regardless of what white decides to play here. If they choose to take here in the center of the board with their pawn, then you play pawn g5, attacking the bishop. The only square for the bishop to go to is g3, but after h4 the cage is locked and there is no way out for the bishop, you're winning. What if instead white chooses to capture on e5 with their bishop? Well, it doesn't change much anyway, because you're gonna be playing the same idea, pawn f6 chasing this bishop, and as it goes backward, you keep attacking it with pawns, and ultimately it is captured there anyway, and the next move you're gonna win the bishop, getting a completely winning position. Once again, very funny trap, which happens out of nowhere, really, with the weird second move pawn h5, and that's why it's so easy for white to overlook it. And here's a quick quiz for you. This time we're playing white because it's a bonus trap and now here in the Albin counter gambit there is one line we're gonna rush through it very quickly because the point is for you to test out your tactical vision in this position. It is white to move and please try to think about this and to find the winning move for white and if you can then write it down in the comments below. All the games that I have shown you today, as well as all the resources I mentioned, will be in the description below this video. Also, please don't forget that the special offers in honor of launching of our upgraded trading portal will only be good for several days, so you may click the link over there and check this out right now. Wishing you a great rest of the day, keep crushing it, talk soon.